Hello, this is Cathode Cat, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about some of my work experiences and some of my college experiences. I'm also going to be sharing some of the food I prepare to eat healthy, like fairly healthy, and also not go against the rules of Lyme disease, or at least try. Okay, so this is my little like uh, kitchen, little mini kitchen inside my room. This is coconut oil for my hands because they get very dry, especially during the winter. This is vitamin C, this is some multivitamins also by Immunical and uh, Omega fish oil. And this is cat's claw, which is what I'm going to take um, with this very tasty hot chocolate mix I'm going to make. So, I have in here some leftovers of cocoa and organic traditions stevia powder because it's still green and not white, not that white processed stuff. But you know, I have the right to suspect that this is actual whole leaf stevia considering it has all the labels on it. So, as you can see. It's kind of green powder. It's got all these fancy labels on it. I don't know, it doesn't have the non-GMO label on it. It says here EcoCert, EcoCert, um, Im imported Canada organic, USDA organic, kosher and raw. But I can't see here non-GMO. Maybe it's GMO, who knows. I wish, I wish I knew the stuff. I think eventually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some stevia leaf seeds or something and plant them. I just don't know where to find them right now. Then I'm gonna take some cocoa powder because cocoa is a, an antioxidant. Very tasty, delicious, sweet, hot chocolate drink. The stevia is very sweet. It's very, very, very sweet. Sweeter than sugar, actually. So you can still have your sweet tooth if you drink stevia. And I'm gonna eat some cashews. Because I love cashews. All this. So I added some almond milk and it looks like this. It's kind of kind of got a really yucky, mucky color of like swamp. But it tastes really good. So yeah, I have Lyme disease. Uh, I contracted it in December 2017. Yay for Lyme disease. Um, before that, okay, so here's my story. I got kicked out of my parents' house. They called 911 on me. And the reason for that was because I wasn't doing any work and they kept on pestering me and bothering me and, and arguing with me to do work. But I couldn't because I had a concussion. Because a woman had ran me over on a car, so she totally just ran me over. That's, that, that's a whole other story. And I couldn't work and my parents were very angry at me and I, I got angry too, so I got angry because they were angry and they were like holding back their anger and being very passive aggressive and I just went outside and broke a few of their like little Walmart vases and they called the cops on me two times because I tried to come back and then they called the cops again so um, now I'm just doing art oh yeah part of this vlog is also going to be me doing art to survive my problem is I don't know how to market my art and how to sell it so that's why I'm starting this vlog because I'm trying to get some attention I make paintings uh, and I have a whole bunch of coloring books so yeah uh, I'm gonna be cooking and showing you what I what medicines I take and my 
coloring books. I think I'll do some coloring book sessions where I'll just color. And right now I'm having some, uh, not almonds, cashews, because they're very tasty, delicious. My mom kept on trying to get me to work as a cashier, even though I have a university degree. So I had my university degree before my concussion as an art and art history person, or an art history major. It didn't really get me anywhere, I couldn't find a job, because you need experience to have a job. Um, my art and art history degree couldn't get me a job. That's another thing. And where, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, then my mom kept on telling me to work as a cashier. But the problem is, I already have worked as a cashier. And it was terrible, very toxic environment. Here in North York, I was working as a cashier. And I was met with a very toxic manager who tried to make me do all the work, including his work. So he would just go to the back room all day and tell me to wash all the food food containers like in the entire row in 10 minutes and then somebody would come in and check that I did a very thorough job and I had to be at the cash serving the customers even when there was a very long lineup and if I didn't get everything right he would stand very close to me and yell at me and tell me that I'm incompetent and that I'm not capable of doing anything and lowering down my self-esteem honestly I really didn't like how close he would stand to me but I couldn't talk back because I was in college at the time I was in a private college and I didn't know the difference between private and public, but the difference is that private colleges take all your OSAP money. They zap all your money so you have to survive on your own, so I had to pay my rent with my working money. And they were paying me nickels and dimes. So I couldn't really talk back because I needed the money to pay rent. And he knew this and I think I think because he knew I was going to college and I think he was abusing his position to like get very close to me and, and talk down on me he would like he would like stop me after the shift like for 15 minutes just stop me before I went home and it was late at night and I wanted to get home quickly he would just stop me and lecture me for about 10 minutes or so and tell me how indecent I am and then there was the weird thing where whenever customers would be like, Oh, is she your daughter? He'd be like, No, no, she's very pretty. She's much prettier. And he'd like compliment me on my looks. And then tell me that I'm incompetent. And then there was like the subtle sexual harassment. Like for example, when I went to plug in the vacuum and I didn't know how to plug the proper, like where to find the plug in the vacuum. And he told me, Well, can't you see this is, this one is the male and this one is the female. And this is how you plug it in. And I'm like, you know, you didn't have to go that far as to tell me that one's a male and that one's the female, or I don't know, whatever the computer terminology they use. You could have just shown me how to plug it in without having the distance, going the distance to tell me how incompetent I am and pointing out the different parts, the male and the female. I thought that was extremely rude of him, extremely unprofessional. So yeah was a toxic environment before that I worked as customer service rep that was a very toxic environment a different toxic environment but it was also toxic it was a female toxic environment where it was dominated by females and you'd be henpecked to do everything they say so one thing I didn't agree upon was you had to stand there like a Buckingham soldier literally not from your place and the manager would sometimes or or the, the person below the manager, whoever, whatever that shithead system is, would go upstairs and tell you, get back in your spot and don't move. And if they see you moving, they'd write notes on, on their notepad. And literally some people actually just stood there like a Buckingham soldier. This one girl told me that she would stand there until she, she would have tears of pain. And there was one girl there that um, was having um, bubbles in her joints. And yeah, it's a very toxic environment. They, they're they basically teaching you strategies on how to rip off the customers, how to catch them during their weak spots. And I would, whenever I did my job, I just like, I was straight up and honest with them. And if they asked me which one would I get, I would always say I'd get the cheapest one. 
you know, that because I would probably do that if I didn't have any Photoshop photo manipulation skills. So yeah, toxic environments everywhere. Uh, every company you go to will uh, try to shut you up and get you in line so that the upper upper ranks can get fat and happy and treat you like a subhuman low-life person so yeah don't get into that and again I was going to college because I I wanted to become a I don't know an animator I wanted I wanted to become a video game designer or you can become an animator if you want after that because they teach you like 3d 3d like animation College is not worth it, especially private college. Um, just do it yourself. Not everything is do it yourself, but for this stuff, for sure, it's do it yourself. Because they're just there to take your money. Like, literally, they just take people, they take their OSAP money, they take these poor students by surprise, strip them of their OSAP money, and then kick them out. Because most people would be, like, literally, most people just wouldn't survive college, they would just have to leave. But by that time, they've already bitten a whole chunk out of your OSAP. And put you even deeper in debt. This is what I don't like about my roommates. Is they always take this out. Because they just want to flush all the junk down the drain. And I keep telling them, but I guess some of them don't know yet. What I usually do is I... Um, whenever I spill something let it accumulate in here and then I throw it in the uh, organic pile and people just would rather the sink clogs oh well another bad thing about the first company I worked for where I was a customer service rep is that they kind of have like a waiver that you sign that says like okay we're not responsible for any health issues you get but they, you know, they make it sound like it's not that bad. Like, it just says standing for hours. Can, can you stand for hours? It doesn't say, can you stand for hours in one spot without moving? And can you stand, can you stand being yelled at? I've noticed, like, there was this one girl who started off at the company. She was very shy, very, like, nicey-nice. And then one day she got upgraded to be one of the, I guess, one of the managers or whatever. She turned into a total bitch that day. And she was just henpecking all her previously co-workers on the same level to stand and not move. And there she would be just strutting down the hallway with her little coffee or with her little tea or whatever. Looking all cozy because she doesn't have to wear the uniform and be all uncomfortable in a uniform and just bossing the sh out of everyone wow um i don't even know what to say to that i'm pretty sure the turnover i think it's called a turnover rate like i guess um, when when a company hires and then fires a bunch of people at a very fast pace a lot of these people were students and honestly the pay is minimum wage unless you manage to make a lot of sales and some days if you don't manage to make a certain amount of sales they will threaten you with firing you so there's so much pressure that you can just see it boiling all the girls try to make one you know make themselves look pretty as pretty as they can so they can convince all those married men to buy this totally useless junk and you know, a lot of them have their nails very nicely done and look down on the customers, kind of like, if you don't buy this, then you're just a broke person. And look at me, look at how well my nails are done. Look at how well my makeup is done and my perfume, don't I just look exquisite? I'm just this exquisite being in comparison to you. You are just a piece of junk, unless you buy this and you can show me how much of uh, not a piece of junk you are by buying the most expensive of these three packages, three or four packages. And just when they have their wallet out, this is one of the techniques, is when they have their wallet out, you try to upscale them for something kind of small, like a picture frame or something. Like, would you like a picture frame with that? You know, it literally says on the wall, um, when they have their wallet out, do this. There's also a phrase on the wall that says B-E-D. I don't remember what it is, I think it's like 
uh, all the negative characteristics of an, a bad employee, like bad, um, egotistical, and I, I don't remember the exact words, bad, egotistical, and I don't know what the D was. I think it was like depressed or something. It's like, if you're going to act out and if you're not going to follow the rules, if you're not going to make sales, you might as well stay in bed. You know, the way you treat your employees also affects your sales because with such a high turnover rate, people have families, like the world is more connected than you think. Yeah, so unfortunately, it is a very successful business. However, I do see, I do predict and hope that it gets worse because it's very, very um, wasteful. It's a very wasteful business. They sell a commodity that's totally useless. They sell it for a very high price and they they really torture a lot of employees like this is this is a butcher shop job and Another thing while I was working there is I noticed that one of the managers She was doing a very bad job of editing and whenever I had to sell it to people I would have to edit it all over again and I learned very quickly how to use their editing software. I never got any kind of credit for it. I asked to be put in a position where I would be kind of taking care more of the photo editing because I'm, I'm very good at it. I'm very good at uh, sizing the people up or down based on, based on, you know, the scale of the photograph. And some of these managers, they just had a horrible sense of like space. Like they didn't know how to properly place the people in the photograph for it to look realistic so I had a concussion in June 2017 and when I went to get my papers my I think I had to get some papers signed literally one of the managers who knew me from before told me to bugger off in a very polite way and sent me to Denver Colorado to uh, deal with the issue and then she just didn't want to talk to me so I came into the booth and I said please I used to work here I would like to get this paper signed she told me like I'm gonna call I think she said she's gonna call security or police or something yeah so then I eventually uh, got my lawyer to contact her and uh, they fixed the issue uh, another thing was I remember I had my I was basically suspended at one point it's a long story, maybe I'll tell you in another blog how I got suspended. But when I came back, I came back and I went in I went into the booth. They told me that I had entered through the wrong door. So they told me to go back outside, all the way back outside and enter through the right door. And so that's what I did. I went all the way back outside, entered through the right door and came back to the same booth. So, they told me I was supposed to go through security. So, there's many doors there. So, I went through one of the uh, ample doors in the building, down to security, or so I thought, but it turned out to be a receptionist. But there's so many doors there, like, it's very confusing. It's, it's a very confusing building. And the receptionist told me, I'm, if I'm to go to security, I'm supposed to come down with someone. I can't come down unaccompanied. So I went back, back upstairs and told them, if I'm to go downstairs, someone is supposed to accompany me. They just yelled and screamed at me and told me to get out and go to the security and that I'm breaking security protocol and um, that I should, you know, I should be in big trouble for this. As they always do, because they were always telling me that I'm going to get in trouble, always threatening me, constantly threatening me, constantly threatening that security will take me away. Even even before the suspension, they were telling me security was going to take me away. And when, and when I left and came back for the concussion papers, she kept on threatening me that security was going to take me away. Oh man, she would have been probably so happy to see security just drag me by force out of that building with pull me by my hair. I, I think she was probably addicted to drugs. That girl was not okay. There's something wrong with her. She looked like she was a drug addict. Anyway, so then, okay, so I, I go to security 
and I tell them that I need my badge. Security registers this, and then they tell me that somebody was supposed to accompany me, and then they tell me that, wait a minute, when they took their bad, when when they took your badge, they were supposed to admit the badge to security, like they weren't supposed to keep the badge, which they did, and that's breaking safety protocol. So they broke safety protocol. And then they called that the second manager who was sitting there having a resting bitch face with a very happy smile on her face that I was being yelled and screamed at. She had to come downstairs for me and accompany me back upstairs and give me back my badge. So eventually I left the company with my dignity and I started to go to college. My manager at my second job as a cashier actually asked me once do you even need your paycheck? And I'm like thinking, no, I'm just coming in here because I love you so much. Like really, who asks that kind of question? And I was on three months probation or testing. Like they basically could fire me at any point during my job and not give me any explanation. Okay, so another thing I'm gonna do right now for two hours approximately in the morning, I do something called zapping or writing. I'm trying to get rid of my Lyme disease, so I'm using these amazing products here. This one's called Spooky 2. I'm pretty sure if you have Lyme disease, you may have heard of it. Or even if you have cancer. Okay, so this one is attached to um, the remote which has my fingernail in it and I'm going to go and see which one this is. This one goes to this side. So I'm going to go to Magellan's and Lime, Magellan's and Lime remote because it's the remote. All maintenance. Allow generator overrides, and I'm pretty sure it's this one. If not, then the wrong generator will go off. So uh, let's see. This one should go off. Yeah. Okay, it's gone off. Or no, the wrong one. This one is gone off. So okay. And I stop. And I say allow generator overwrites. It's this one. So start. Should be this one. There. Now it's on. Okay, and this one's off. So I'm gonna attach my tens pads. One to my uh, right ankle and one to my left palm. And I'm just gonna lie down on my bed and just wait for two hours for the procedure to finish. Here's, here's how I set up my TENS pads. I go to Margellans and Lime, contact. And right now I'm doing viruses A. Control, allow generator overwrites, and I forgot which step I'm on. So I'm... There it is. I, I inputted the step over here. 
step 28. I hope to see you in my next vlog. Thanks for listening. Bye.